Welcome to my video. Um, today I'm going to show you how to balance the throttle bodies on a Sprint ST. Um, I'll tell you the few things that you'll need. First, you'll need a laptop. Um, you don't need to have a Mac. I am just running a Mac. Um, but I'm running Windows on my Mac um, through a program called VirtualBox that allows me to run XP. You need, you need XP or higher to run this program. Um, you then need to remove your tank completely and um, remove the air box. So to remove the tank, um, the Haynes manual is pretty good at showing you how to do that. But basically, you need to remove the seat and then undo the four bolts for the tailpiece and then um, slide the tailpiece off. Um, and then you need to undo the pin through the tank and then slide the tank back and take it off. And then what you need to do is you need to remove the air box. Now I have the air box here. Um, you'll need a torque piece, torque bit rather, um, to take the map sensor off. And then you can take the air box apart and then you can remove it from the bike. And then what I've done is I've reinstalled the tank on the bike, but I've raised the tank. So you can see here, I have a bit of wood at the back and a bit of wood at the top, which allows me to get my arm in to adjust um, the screws for the throttle bodies. Um, here's the map sensor that was on the top of the um, uh, air box, um, and I've plugged it back in and it's still attached to its tube so it'll still function. The air temperature sensor is unplugged, but that's fine. Um, and then before I put the tank back on, I made sure I had a screwdriver that fit um, the screws and the screws and get the camera in. The screws you're looking for is this this pin, followed by this one, and the number three, which is up here. So it's one, two, three. Um, and then I made sure my screwdrivers fit the um, holes. And um, the screwdrivers that I've used are the Halfords standard ones. Um, they seem to work fine. Um, the bit is about about this wide, um, and that's it really. So that's it set up. Um, I've made sure my tune ECU is connected, which it is, and it's now currently reading the map um, and setting up tune ECU. I'll talk about that in a moment, and then when it's ready, I'm going to start up the bike and warm it up because currently it's cold. So for tune ECU, I have an OBD. Two cable um, which connects to the ECU on the bike and for the sprint it connects here in the glove box. You can see. Um, and then I have it hooked up to a laptop. You can have a pretty low laptop. You have to have, um, I've got a Mac here because it's what I have. Um, some people have um, just an old laptop with 50 megs of um, RAM, but this suits me fine. Um, I'm running a program called VirtualBox which allows me to run XP or Vista or, or whatever on my Mac. So I'm using that. So I've installed Tune ECU. I've gone for a cable from a company called Lone Lek, or Lone Lek. Um, and they make the correct cable. It's about £15. Pounds, um, and it and the, it comes with less um, issues of connectivity. Um, some of the cheap eBay cables don't work as well. So for peace of mind, I just got that cable. So I've read the map. And I'm going to save it so that I have it for later. Um, and I'm going to save it in Tune ECU. And I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to put it in a folder, which is my maps. Okay. So what I'm going to do is. Um, if we go on to tests, we can see here each, if I move you across a little bit, we can see each um, throttle body and the pressure that's drawing, and then a general overview of the bike. Um, what I'm going to do is warm the bike up and get its temperature, because currently it's quite cold. There we go. Uh, you'll notice my ignition is on, but actually my headlight is off. The reason I've done this is I've pulled the headlight fuse, which on the Sprint is the second one down here. 
uh, and that's what's draining less power on the battery so then I have less problems if the battery goes too low the tune ECU doesn't function as well um, so I'm going to warm her up now just get that done Yeah, you'll need. I've just realised you'll need the um, headlight relay in to start the bike. So I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to turn my ignition off. Put it in. Make sure it's in there, good and proper. So as we can see now, the temperature is up to temperature. Uh, I'm getting a fault code here saying the inlight air temperature sensor isn't in, but I know that, which is fine. Um, and I'm currently in diagnostic mode, which you can't see this. If I move over to tests, the top right, I'll then get a figure for each, each throttle body. So I'm going to run the bike now and see currently what it's running at. You can see this one's running at 620, the rest are running at 610, 600, 610. It takes about five seconds or so for the ECU to catch up, for this to catch up with the throttle bodies. So you have to wait for a delay. However, after a blip, it should alright itself. Thirty twenty 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 ten ten. So this one is, I'd say, ten above. So the procedure now is to match throttle bodies one and two, and then try and match three, which will probably knock two out, and then go back to two. So. I can see it's finally settled at 590, 590, 600. So this one here is 10 above. Doesn't matter what the numbers are, as long as they're all equal. Here we go. So this is throttle body one, this is throttle body two, this is throttle body three. So I want to match one to two. As I've, I've, oh, I've taken out of it so much. Give it a quick blip. Yeah, so I'm going to do three next and match that, which will probably knock two back out after just two. However, I'm going to give it a go. Well, that's gone fairly central to be honest. This one keeps being slow to return. Got it, and then tweak it a little bit. Just adjusted it, 
you need to screw it in to up the pressure. Now screw it in a little bit. That came back fairly quickly then. Happy with that, try it again. Yep, quite quick, it's 590, 600, 600, 600, yeah, that's fine, so close as I'm going to get it, I'm happy with that. It looks a bit messy there, but I tried to balance two to number one and get these two the same, and then balance number three to number two, but that means this one's probably out of sync, so you have to balance this one again a little bit more, um, if you can see. Um, and that's it, it looked pretty good on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to reassemble the bike, start it up again. And if all is okay still, I'm going to reset the adaptations and the throttle position sensor um, so that it's all clear and set and ready to go. This cluster of vac lines here can come loose. And one of them came loose for me when I put the bike back together and it kept coming loose. So I ended up tie wrapping each vac line onto this connector in the middle here and that made sure that they didn't come loose and my bike ran fine. If your bike has a lumpy tick over when you reinstall everything back together this is the reason.